Hi, this lesson is on Landform Creation, Geology Standard 3.4. In this lesson, we will be looking at constructive and destructive forces that affect our landforms. So, what exactly are landforms in the first place? Landforms are any natural physical feature of the Earth's surface. They can include mountains, hills, plateaus, and valleys. These landforms can be affected by two different types of forces constructive forces and destructive forces. Constructive means to build up, so these types of forces are those that actually build up our landforms, and they include crustal deformation, volcanic eruptions, and sediment deposits. Destructive means to tear down or destroy, so these destructive forces include erosion and weathering, and again, these are forces that break down or destroy our landforms. Let's start by first looking at constructive forces. Again, these are forces that build up our landforms. The first example of a constructive force is actually crustal deformation. We've already kind of looked at this when talking about mountain building, but crustal deformation is really any time that there's a strong pressure or squeezing that affects the rock by creating either a fault or a fold. So if you look in the picture on the right, you can actually see a beautiful example of first a fold that actually forces the landform up into like a hill shape. And you can also actually see a small fault that goes from the woman's foot to the left hand side of the picture. And again, this is really any time that there's a strong pressure that affects the rock by creating either a fault or a fold. Whether or not you have a fault or a fold depends on the flexibility of the rock at the time when it moved. So if it's really flexible, like soft candy, it will most likely fold. If it becomes more brittle, like hard candy, it's going to crack and cause a fault. Faults and folds can vary in size. You can have microscopic fo faults, or you can have a fault as large as like the San Andreas Fault in California. Volcanic eruptions are actually another example of constructive forces. So think about it. Any time lava cools, it becomes igneous rock. This igneous rock then creates landforms. So if you look in the top picture there, you see how the lava really spread out over the road, pretty much creating a whole new landform. And if you look in the bottom picture, that mountain range was actually once lava that cooled and became igneous rock. The third type of constructive force includes sediment deposits. Sediment deposits occur any time a small particle of rock, like a grain of sand, is compacted or squeezed together to create sedimentary rock. So if we look in the picture to the right, do you see how the bottom layers are kind of very sandy and then you have a gravel layer? And then you have a mixed gravel and sand layer and then on top it almost looks like clay? All of those layers have been compacted and squeezed together so that they now actually make rock. This is actually a beautiful example of sedimentary rock. Now we're actually going to be talking about destructive forces. Again, these are forces that destroy our landforms. A good example of a destructive force is actually weathering, and weathering is just the breaking down of rock due to exposure of natural elements. There are two different types of weathering, physical weathering and chemical weathering. Physical weathering can include forces like wind, water, and ice. Chemical weathering is a little different. It's an actual chemical reaction between um, a certain substance and the rock itself, or the minerals within that rock. So if you look in the picture to the right, that's actually a beautiful example of chemical weathering. Something actually reacted to the minerals in the rock, causing it to weather away, but it didn't affect the whole rock. That's why we have some holes there. A good example of chemical weathering or a chemical reaction is actually like rust on an old car. That would be an example of a chemical reaction. Okay, the second and last example of destructive force that we're actually going to be talking about today includes erosion. And this is the process by which the rock particles are moved. So if we look in the picture on the top there, we see that all the sand or dirt underneath that tree was actually moved by the water 
whether it's an ocean or a lake is unclear, but it was those, those rock particles were moved because of the water. So again, these forces include water, wind, ice, and gravity, and they all cause the sediment to move. Typically, they move downhill. So if you look in the bottom picture there, you can see how the road was actually eroded away by some kind of flooding. We've actually probably seen a lot of this in the recent month, um, just because we've had so much rainfall. Okay, so let's do a quick review. I've got the boxes here for constructive and destructive forces. Can you fill in examples and define each one? All right, well that's actually it for today's lesson. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will be there and available to help. Good luck!